The Cambrian Explosion is the insurmountable hurdle for evolutionists. Try as they might, they cannot explain the sudden appearance of all the major phyla without any precursors. Even Richard Dawkins was forced to admit this. The Cambrian Explosion, as you probably know, is an event in the history of life, in the fossil history, in which it appears that about half a billion years ago, a little bit more, most of the great animal phyla rather suddenly appear in the fossil record. The ma majority of animal phyla, we find them, quote, already in an advanced state of evolution the very first time they appear. It is as though they were just planted there without any evolutionary history. Darwin himself cited the Cambrian Explosion as an argument against his theory. Even Darwin knew that the Cambrian Explosion was fatal to evolution, so what's with all of these scientists 150 years later? I had to investigate. Contrary to popular belief, the Cambrian Explosion is not the origin of life on Earth. According to the geological record, we can trace the history of life back at least 3 billion years previous. Also contrary to popular belief, the Cambrian Explosion is not the origin of multicellular life. According to the geological record, we can trace the history of multicellular life to at least 200 million years previous. Entire ecosystems of life forms unlike anything alive today had already flourished and gone extinct before the Cambrian Explosion. Also also called the Cambrian radiation, the significance of the Cambrian is that we see an almost sudden diversity in life, most specifically animals with the ability to move. Previous to that, we see both plants and animals in the fossil record, but they were mostly filter feeders or stationary grazers on bacteria. Some of them are nearly impossible to classify, blurring the lines between animals and plants. Although we do see some mobile animals previous to the Cambrian, it is at this point that we also see a greater abundance due to one particular development, calcium. Calcification. Previous to the advent of calcification, animals were all soft-bodied, making them less likely to fossilize than their plant contemporaries, which feature a cell wall in addition to a cell membrane. This was preceded by a great oxygenation event beginning almost two billion years previous. We know there was little to no free oxygen before this point because of the pristineness of metals like iron and rocks from this time. Had there been excessive oxygen before, there would also be rust. At the end of the Archaean, photosynthesizing microbial life began proliferating, and just carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. After a billion years, this oxygen began to dominate Earth's atmosphere, and when organisms, such as early animals, had evolved to utilize this oxygen, they found a nearly endless supply of energy, allowing them to diversify at a geologically rapid rate. At the time when Darwin had written on the origin of species, he was correct to point out the rarity of fossils from before the Cambrian, but that was over a century and a half ago. Prior to trilobites, in the Precambrian, we now find morphological predecessors like Harvin Carinans. Whether or not they are actually the ancestors of trilobites, we may never know, but again, they have the features we would expect and are found in the precise strata we should expect them to be if the theory of universal common descent were true. Prior to that, we can also find fossils that show the divergence of bilaterians like Kimberella from cnidarians such as jellyfish, and giving rise to later mollusks such as squids, snails, and octopods. Again, in the same strata, evolution predicts. We can even see early chordates like Ernietta in deposits predating the Cambrian period. Even before that, we have found four-celled embryos in strata as early as 600 million years ago, and we can see traces of life going back for over 3 billion years, including stromatolites and actual bacteria fossils. What we don't see are anything like mammals, reptiles, birds, amphibians, or even insects. Tetrapods had yet to appear and wouldn't for several million more years. So yes, the fossil record is incomplete, and will always be incomplete. This is because fossilization is very rare. You can prove this for yourself by going out into your backyard and digging up the corpse of your childhood family dog. If over a decade has passed since you buried it, it probably isn't there anymore despite the fact that you probably buried it fairly rapidly. The fact that we have any fossils at all is just short of miraculous. The fact that we have enough to put together a framework for evolutionary lineage is even more so. The Cambrian Explosion began roughly 550 million years ago and lasted for 20 million years. The last I checked, 20 million years is anything but sudden. 
sudden. What is also notable is that the Cambrian isn't even the point of the greatest diversification in life. Tens of millions of years later, both the Ordovician and the Silurian were marked by increases in diversity that dwarfed the Cambrian explosion. The greatest diversity of all life, however, came just prior to the evolution of humanity. The Cambrian explosion is far from a challenge to evolutionary theory, but rather presents even more confirmations of Darwin's predictions and is another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.